you would like to start or yeah so uh, welcome to the patna mulesoft meetup group so today we have a topic like type integration with mulesoft uh, can you go to the next step and we have organizers organizers like let me introduce myself like i am shyamla prasad and working for tricon imported and i have 12 plus experience uh, in mostly in java tech side and also i have uh, five plus experience in mulesoft and i am a mulesoft mentor and i love to share knowledge with uh, mulesoft community so maybe if you are interested in learning in data website so you can follow me in linkedin i'm sharing some tips uh, daily in linkedin yeah over to you amit hey thanks yam so yeah, i am working in apicero as a solution architect and uh, overall i have 12 plus years of experience in mulesoft i have five plus years of experience i'm a certified mulesoft architect and platform architect I am the co-leader for this Patna Mulesoft group. Like to share knowledge and would welcome every one of you for today's meetup. Thank you for joining. Om, please. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Siam. Hi, everyone. Om Prakash this side, and thank you once again for joining. Uh, I am primarily in the Salesforce ecosystem from approximately nine years, and as you know, Salesforce Mulesoft like uh, part of one family. Of course, I also uh, learning Salesforce. In the March 2020, uh, we got the idea of having you know meetup uh, group in Patna as well. So this group was just started that time, and thankfully we have Mulesoft expert like Amit, Siam, as organizers with us. So thank you. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Uh, before going, uh, we we will read like safe harbor statement. Like both the speaker and the host organizing them this meetup in individual capacity only. So we are not representing any companies here. And this presentation is strictly for learning purpose. And organizer, organizer and presenter do not hold any responsibility that the same solution will work for your business requirement. And this presentation is not meant for any uh, promotional activities. Uh, can you go to the next slide? And housekeeping, like a recording of this meetup will be uploaded in the event page within 24 hours. Like YouTube link will be up to, updated in the event page. And you can, uh, like question can be submitted asked at any time in the chat question or we have enabled like mic also for everyone. So you can ask, uh, unmute your mic and ask your questions and you can make it more interactive and also like most important thing like give us the feedback and you can read this meetup session by filling a feedback form which you will receive after this meetup and we love feedback like it will be bread and butter for meetup like uh, uh, when i got the feedback for first when i was a first time speaker so i got good feedback and after that i start I started uh, presenting more uh, to the uh, Mulesoft community. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and great thing I want to add, uh, Sam, you also presented uh, with us uh, in the past, right, Sam? <laughs> yeah, I've started a speaker journey with Patna Mulesoft Meetup. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And like, uh, cheers, like uh, at the end, we have a quiz. So three lucky winners will receive a Mulesoft voucher for the training and exam. So be attentive uh, and there will be some uh, five persons at the end and we will play quiz and three lucky villain will get a voucher. Uh, yeah, go to the next slide. And today we have two speakers and Mamta and Prathvi and both are my teammates. So we have done together like a staff integration in our project. So they are sharing today's knowledge. Mamta, maybe uh, you can introduce yourself yeah. and then Prakash. Sure. Thank uh, you. Next slide. Next slide, Paige. Next slide. I think yeah, they can go to the back slide. Yeah, Mamta, please go ahead. Oh, sorry, I can see on your one. Okay, okay, sorry, maybe never. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, sorry, last one, Mamta. The uh, yeah. next one, next one, please. Which one? The which the which you have your your details your bio okay. yeah yeah please go ahead yeah uh, 
Is it okay? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Mamta Bapna. I'm working as a tech lead uh, at Dylan Francis, and I have uh, total 12 plus year experience, majorly in Java, AWS, clouds, and I'll, also I have one plus experience in MuleSoft. I am AWS Architect Associate certified. Yeah, that's all about me, Prathvi. Hi everyone, uh, this is Prithvi Shetty. I'm currently working as a software engineer in Tricon Infotech. I have around 3.5 years of experience and I have uh, cleared the MuleSoft level one certification. So that's about me. Thank you. Thank you, Prithvi. Yeah, so hi everyone. This is our today's agenda. First, we will go about what is Stripe and like what is the benefits, features, why we should go for the Stripe. And then we will go uh, know about the Stripe connector. And then we have one demo, live demo, like how we can do all this coding part and followed by the question answer session. And then as Shyam told, like we have the quiz to win the prizes. Yeah, thank you. So should we start? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So Stripe, like what comes into your mind? What Stripe? Actually, Stripe is payment processing platform. Right now, most of the business are going online. So if we are online, we have should have the payment facility. But to have our own payment, it is very cumbersome. Like we have to go for the merchant account and many things are there. So, but Stripe make it very easy. It's a payment processing platform for the internet. It allow uh, merchants to accept credit card, debit card, and many other payment methods we will go through in the next slides. And it is very good, basically suited for the business, online businesses. And uh, Stripe is originally founded in uh, 2010. The main aim was Stripe was to make it easier to accept payments over the internet. And uh, it is providing lots of services and features. And they have very user-friendly APIs. So we can develop quickly. We can integrate the Stripe in our application. And also it has uh, fraud, fraud, uh, fraud detection, fixed rate, regardless of the network and many more. And today, millions of business of all sizes, like startup, large enterprise, they are using Stripe software. And uh, some of them, like uh, it's Amazon, Shopify, so you can understand like how um, Stripe is providing their features day by day. It's very good to uh, integrate Stripe in our application. So how does Stripe work? Actually, uh, uh, if uh, like Stripe is in between, you can say with the bank. So whenever we have uh, like we have the pay button. So what happens in the in between uh, the throughout process? Like we enter the card and finally our payment is accepted. So Stripe is like what they do get they get the card information and then this card information enters is into the Stripe payment gateway, which is very secured. So it encrypts the data and then the Stripe sends the data to the acquire bank. So it will process the transaction. So you can see the big benefit here is the Stripe is serving as a merchant. Like we are user of the Stripe. So we don't have to um, make a merchant account with the bank. We can directly go as a sub merchant to the Stripe. So we are like, uh, it's very easy for us to just uh, get a account with Stripe and we can directly start making the payments through Stripe. So Stripe serves as a uh, merchant and you, Stripe user like we. So we don't have to set up a merchant account. So it is a very uh, good to uh, go through the Stripe for the payments. And then the payments through the credit card network, Visa, MasterCard. And finally, the bank, like whoever um, the customer has used the bank card, they will accept or deny the transaction. And finally, again, it comes through the, uh, the Stripe gateway and we get the um, uh, it's accepted or declined. So now how, like, how can we start with the Stripe? So it's very simple. Stripe, they have their own uh, dashboard. We can simply go and create a Stripe account. Prithvi will tell like how we are going to do. It's a very easy process uh, to create a Stripe account. We have to give you some details and simply we have to link the account. So it is very easy to set up account in the Stripe. Yeah, now we will go with the key features, like why we should use Stripe. Uh, mm -hmm. Mamta, sorry to yeah, interrupt. Please. There was yes. one question. Yeah. Like uh, this Stripe is a free trial or a paid version? Question it's from free. Prabhi. It's a free. Yeah, we can go ahead. It's a free version. Unlike yes. for the enterprise, is free or like they have a paid version? 
uh, in in enterprise applications like where we use so there will be some transaction fee deducted okay. for each uh, transaction so like some percentage will be there uh, okay. for the lab environment that is online environment but for the test environment is free and they give the security key like on the twitter so we can easily create our account it will be in like a test mode you can test so okay. you can't perform the uh, uh, transaction but uh, the journey you can identify like how it is going to have that journey so it's very easy to understand how it will happen actually in that live environment okay i think it's answer pravin question thank you yeah. thank you yeah so you can see stripe bring together everything that is required to build website and apps that accept payments and send payout globally so not only the payment apart from that it uh, also uh, help companies to beat fraud it has a radar and many things it can send, help to send the invoices it also not only online but now it is also supporting the cards so they issue the virtual and physical cards through that also we can do the payments and like many more yeah so this is a interesting part for the developer so stripe uh, if you go through the stripe documentation it's very very easy uh, i think within one or few days uh, we can easily write at least a test code to integrate with the stripe and do the transactions they their uh, apis are very easy to use and it is like very simple and they have very good documentation we don't have to uh, integrate with the multiple payment functionality they have provided very good apis so we can refer those apis and we can start our coding with a even a very uh, developer which is having very bare minimum knowledge they can also do this stripe uh, api integration in their software in, in their application and stripe supports its client and server libraries in everything like react php java dotnet ios means they are having almost in many technology their sdks and libraries and though also they have pre built integration like shopify woocommerce not suit so right you can just as a sample code like how these are the apis and we can use those apis in our code so yeah that's about the stripe apis and second yeah this is very interesting so you can see stripe supports more than 135 currencies and apart from that it is used in 35 plus countries so stripe make money simple borderless and programmable as the rest of the internet so you can see how stripe powerful like it handles 250 million requests per day and sometime 13000 requ request per second so this is how the powerful the stripe is and uh, yeah so this is like it's payment so we should definitely talk about what are the payment options stripe provides so if you see a uh, stripe is like we can go we can use the debit and credit cards like um, american express visa and also we can use union pay jcb and they they accept all these things apart from that they also accept digital wallet payments like apple pay google pay microsoft pay and these are like they allow this with digital wallet also and apart from that they also support international card so very good thing is they do the conversi conversion they have their own logic so they, uh, this is also supported we can use international card as well and uh, and also stripe support payments like uh, for some of the business they have subscription returner retainers so stripe offers an automatic payment option that allow us to send out the payments for the same amount at regular interval of our like whatever we have chosen so this is like supports stripe support many payment options and in their and um, through their apis and it, yeah so let's go ahead and uh, as we have seen stripe is like it is 99.99 .99 uptime and they are highly scalable and redundant the application is always up uh, we will never find an issue if, through our payments like payment should all uh, if successful so they are that much good and also they are releasing hundreds of features they are improving every year and every day so this is uh, uh, stripe is providing the features and also stripe is using machine learning models to it is like it they use but uh, machine learning models to for the fraud detection and also the in, uh, increased revenue across conversion so they have all these things um yeah so let, now we it's we have talk, uh, talked all this about payments so payment they have it has to be secured we can't uh, use any platform without security without compromising so stripe has been audited and certified as a pci compliance level one service provider 
So it will go through all the things which is required for the security and if it is PCI compliance, it's safely, it can be used safely. And Stripe always, um, whatever the data, it passed through Stripe, the data in transit, and also the data is stored at the Stripe. They both are encrypted. And Stripe, they have different machines for the card information to save the card information. And also, like as we discussed, Stripe gives the features of the fraud prevention and radar. Um, Stripe uses the radar. Radar is Stripe fraud detection, um, protection mechanism. It uses machine learning to detect and block uh, fraud transaction, and it's built right into Stripe. So this is like all about uh, the Stripe uh, security, and also yes, it is HTTPS network. All the transactions, whatever we will do, it will be HTTPS. So Stripe has made the payment very secure. Yes, now about products. So Stripe, if you see, they have given lots of products. Uh, if we even we don't have our, our own checkout, Stripe has given their own checkout page. We can directly plug in into our application. We will go through the Stripe page. We will come to know okay, once you will see. So these all are the products like um, checkout elements, uh, payment links, um, billings, invoicing. Um, we will see uh, once we'll go to the Stripe uh, page. So this is all like a Stripe. You can see Stripe uh, checkout is just a payment page. It will be directly uh, plugged into our application and it ac accepts many uh, payment methods that we discussed and the cards. And if even we don't want to use the Stripe checkout page, what we can do, they are pro uh, providing elements. It's like a pre-built user interface components. Directly, we can design our own payment page and uh, so that uh, uh, we can uh, customize as per our needs. And uh, even we don't want to have all this checkout, they just uh, giving the fle uh, flexibility to create the payment link. So we can share the payment link to uh, pay uh, to pay the amount to the customer. So even there's no coding required. Yeah. So invoicing also, uh, and likewise, they have few more. There are many products. So if uh, let's go to once uh, here. I will just show you uh, here. This is a Stripe dashboard. You can go through. So here you can see these are the products and uh, check out like how and the look and feel. You can go through this website. You will come to know like how easy to have. They have given even the demo. So you can just see this is very easy. It's all uh, done by themselves. We have to just plug in through API. So uh, it's very handy. And if you see uh, here, uh, payment links so they uh, as we discussed they do, we don't have to create just few links uh, clicks i will show you how we can do in the the dashboard but we can create the payment link and we can send the customer so this uh, stripe is uh, providing lots of payment checkout elements payment links radar is like uh, fraud detection invoicing even terminal what we discussed like in person they are providing the this instruments so they we can they can use and they can do the transactions this is, uh, yeah, and they have good um, API uh, documentations. Prithvi will take us to do this one. But yeah, they have very nice uh, all the documentation in their site. So it is very good, easy to refer and prepare that one. Yeah, lastly, I will go through this uh, dashboard. So this is just, a, a, I have just created a test account. You can see it's just a, a test mode. I can't go into this one because to go into the live mode, we have to go through some verification process. So it's just a test mode. Yeah. So this all uh, the home page is it's like it will just show what are the reports you can change here. So how many successful payments, failure, all this will be shown in the Stripe dashboard. And if we go to the payment page, it will show again all the details uh, about whatever transaction happened into our account. So it will give the details for all the um, payments. And if you go through there, lots of, lots of things here regarding the payment. And also they have customer, so they can create our own customer and even they allow the guest customers to do the payments and products. So we, they, you can have your own products, what you want to sell. And uh, if we, I have just added few, um, this one, this one, and you can see here, we, I can create a payment link here, create new payment link. So this, we can share this payment link, create link. So. This we can share to the user and they can simply pay. So this is all done by the Stripe. Then we have to just provide and it is done and it is transferred to our account. So today I have done few payments. You can see it's whatever succeeded. They have the status also. 
so this is all about the dashboard then like that reports many things here but since we have lack of time and we have to go with the demo so yeah sure thank you now i will um, hand over to prathvi uh, to take it further from the stripe connector thank, thank you, you mamta and it does even one question we have um yeah. mamta how yeah, sure. do how do they provide security in case of payment failures during transaction and how they resolve the issue they uh, give uh, means whenever we call the api we get the response so through response we can figure out like what is the issue and we have the dashboard dashboard clearly tells what is the issue sometime fraud also is there so that information will be there in the dashboard okay like so it does it retry or something or like uh, it is a one time no it's one time it's one time yes okay uh, madhukar does this answer your question we have one more question that is ki stripe is using api internally what about if api are down we have seen its line 99.99 it's up we have seen in one of the slide na so there they are mostly up we have never faced actually we have tried into past two years and we have never seen any such issue with the stripe yeah maybe we can handle that in code also like mm -hmm. some retry or something some other mechanism of like uh, handling mm -hmm. correct yeah, yes we can do that one yeah but we have never faced that one yes sure. definitely we can go for the an uh, internal logic to retry as you discussed uh, no if if the api is down does it consider it as a uptime for the stripe connector or uh, uh, it won't consider it as a uptime for the stripe connector for that time so uh, if i understand the question if he's doing the the api which is stripe is calling that is down will it be considered as a downtime or uptime is this the question yes so Means Manta, we are calling the apis provided by the uh, stripe, stripe. correct and the if they are down yes. if they are down it will be considered downtime correct yeah yes that is down downtime okay is this answer your question uh then uh then how can we say that it is 99.99% uh, as uptime amit like see even with 99.99% uptime like we would have some day if like uh, like some time where it could be it go down correct so yeah. like uh, we have systems which is 99.999% like if you say uh 5 minutes per month is a downtime even in the case of 99.99% availability okay hmm. so 5 minutes per month is still we ha you have to yeah. hear yeah even uh, om prakash has shared one link where you can validate like status.stripe.com so there you can see like all the services are like what is the percentage there for last 90 days yeah uh, so they are they are uh, publishing one rss feed also we can consume that feed and that will notify the Uh, yeah there could be some alert mechanism and other things also the other question from uh, rajiv if bank systems are down then will it retry or send error response uh, mamta you want to take this anyone um, if bank systems are down when you say bank system you mean api is correct rajiv api is never a bank system like we always connect to the stripe and stripe mm -hmm. backend in the backend stripe connects to the bank Yeah, if bank systems are down, then will it retry? I believe or, that the, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the question is, then it will retry or it will send error response if bank systems are down. So I believe because it is all implementation of the Stripe, like we are not knowing what are the mm -hmm. things they have implemented. It is their code. So even it is retry, it is like their code. So we are just uh, giving the API provided by Stripe, and it is the backend of the Stripe. No, Mamta, the question is, mm -hmm. like you know, we. you know uh, access on the stripe right yes and in turn stripe access bank systems yes right? so if the bank systems are down so would we get you know uh, error response yes same time or it will retry for some time you know stripe yeah. will retry with the banks and then <clears throat> later on <clears throat> we get the response so what we know and uh, stripe has given lots of error codes like whenever we call so through that we can understand like uh, they finally retry i am not sure because what is their coding but yes we, uh, i know they will provide the response code and uh, 
that particular response code what is happening in the back end well, the thing is like you know sometimes when stripe mm -hmm. you know connects to bank system mm -hmm. maybe the amount is captured right mm -hmm. but bank system fails to give response to stripe mm -hmm. right and then we also don't get the response and customer can you know complain that okay his uh, credit card is blocked by that much amount of uh, by that amount and uh, mm -hmm. we are saying that okay it's not yet processed something of that kind so how it's going to resolve <clears throat> So I, I just wanted to add, uh, like, uh, even if we want to do retries, Stripe has a mechanism to basically uh, handle all this. But this is something that we have to configure. Uh, I'll just be sharing a couple of links for the same. And also, whenever there is an error during a particular transaction, Stripe has a very, uh, very nice, uh, in terms of error codes, there, there's a very well explained error codes on to why that error is basically happening. So that is something that Stripe handles. Also, if there is an issue uh, in any of uh, any of the transactions, like you mentioned, that there is something captured, and then the customer says that the payment is done, but we have not received anything like that. Mm -hmm. In in such uh, scenarios, Stripe is known for its customer support. Uh, so, if you are the business offering the solution, uh, the customer will basically contact you, and then you will be uh, raising uh, issues with the Stripe customer. Uh, care and then that issue will be resolved so this is also something that uh, stripe is known for it has a very solid customer support uh, and i am sharing a couple of links for the retries so, <clears throat> so Bhamta, is there any reconciliation mechanism like you know maybe stripe is having with the merchant with the banks so that you know they get to know okay how many requests were sent and how many were fulfilled and you know what were the responses that kind of uh, interface is there anywhere in the stripe yes it is in the dashboard yes definitely okay <clears throat> okay thanks yeah maybe we can move ahead with i think prithvi will take over yes yes yeah thank you mamta yeah thank prithvi. you yeah so i'll i'll start sharing my screen Can someone please confirm if it's visible? Yeah, yeah. You started? Yeah, I've started. Okay. Uh, can you see? Yeah, uh, yes, okay. yes, yeah. yes. We can. I think everyone can see your screen now. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so basically, Mamta showed uh, the dashboard, but uh, to get it started, we basically have to create an account and it is a very simple process. Uh, I just have to give my uh, email, full name, password, and the account is created. It's as simple as that. Uh, so this is basically where you can uh, start, start off with. So once the account is created, I will be able to see your dashboard. Okay, so it's here. Uh, so this is the dashboard. Uh, this is what it looks like. So uh, just give, giving a brief about this dashboard, uh, also adding on the previous question. Here, uh, we basically get to know all the transactions that have happened for this particular account. And if you click on the transaction, you basically get to know like what, what calls and what uh, whole step that has happened so that kind of visibility is provided by the stripe and also when you create a test account you will have uh, certain api keys that you will need for authentication so every so suppose this is the test account that i have created now i want to get the api keys for for my account I will just go here and I will basically have two API keys, the one that is the publishable key and the other, the secret key. So the secret key is what is required when we make the transaction from the backend. So this is something that is uh, supposed to be uh, very, uh, you have to store it very securely. You cannot hard code it anywhere or you cannot just put it in the GitHub and then upload it because this is a very confidential information that you do not want others to know. A public uh, publishable key is something that you use from the front end for the transaction to be completed. So suppose I activate this account, uh, I will have in total four uh, four keys, two for the test and two for the live mode. Uh, so in total, any account will have four keys. 
so stripe basically provides us two uh, two mode uh, two environment the first one is the test mode and the second one is the live environment so these are the two uh, modes that we we get without activation we can use the test uh, mode so I, I i didn't have to pay anything i didn't have to do any additional setup so this is basically uh, regarding the dashboard keys and all of that so let me start with the stripe connector documentation the Stripe uh, connector that MuleSoft provides, it's a direct integration. So what this uh, connector does is Stripe has uh, exposed a couple of uh, SDKs that basically help us use the Stripe API directly. You do not have to uh, create a curl request and send it over. It's just using the functions. And Stripe connector basically helps us use these uh, with just the components or the connectors that are there. So if you go through the documentation, a couple of things that you require to configure Stripe connector in your, uh, in your project would be, uh, you need to know the basics of MuleSoft. You need credentials, basically. Credentials is what I showed the API keys to make any calls to the Stripe. So um, rest of the things, uh, all of us will be aware of the AnyPoint Studio and all of that. So this is, this is the basic requirement that you need to have. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just create an account and I'll add the Stripe dependency just to show how we can do it. So we have uh, the project created and basically I go to exchange. I check for the Stripe uh, connector. So this is what we are using. We add it. And you will notice that uh, the Stripe connector dependency is added over here. And the form.xml will have the depend uh, dependency added automatically. So this is, uh, the, uh, this is what is required to just add the Stripe dependency in your project. It's as simple as that. Now, uh, moving to the next, uh, so why why do we use and where can we use basically the Stripe connector? So uh, the MuleSoft recommends that we can use in all these cases, sales communication data. So sales meaning like uh, whenever uh, your, your uh, company makes a sale or whenever a new sale goes through. So uh, Stripe basically creates an event. So all of these events can be listened to in your application and you basically can update it in the uh, Google Sheet. This, this use case I'll be showing in my, uh, in my demo. So it'll be more clear then. So this will help you provide a consolidated view of what is going on, what sales has has gone through and it will basically help you analyze the business in such scenarios. Next, you have communication. So suppose uh, there is an order that has been fulfilled or there's an invoice that the customer has paid. So in that case, you will want to know that, okay, uh, you will want to get notified that this sale has happened or this order has happened. So Stripe also provides a, such a feature. You can integrate uh, with MuleSoft, you can basically send uh, custom notification to Slack or Gmail. So that is one of the use case. Apart from that, there is data. So this is similar to what I mentioned in the sales. So all of the uh, all of the transactions that go through can be saved in the uh, CSV file along with Mule and Stripe combined together. And this basically helps you analyze whatever transactions or sales that you have done for your company. So th these are like uh, these are like common use cases that we can think about when we integrate our application with Stripe. 
uh, so yeah apart from this uh, authentication uh, regarding authentication something that is important is uh, whenever you make any call to the stripe whenever you use the stripe components you will have to authenticate and the way you use it is using the api keys that i showed over here so you will need to use the secret key to authenticate now i'll i'll just open uh, this documentation where it will help us understand like how we can uh, authenticate so we have reached this step uh, what i will do is i will create a flow simple flow I'll create a new connector configuration. Okay. So I'll just, for now, I'll just drag any uh, random type operation that I, I want. So say I'm, I'm dropping the delete customer over here. So here is where uh, we will have to create the configuration. So I'll just go and you'll have to select a connection. So if you notice here, uh, this is the base URI. This is required because uh, anytime you make a call to uh, Stripe internally, this is what is used by MuleSoft. So this remains same for the test and for the prod. How Stripe distinguishes between whether it is test or prod is using this uh, authorization key. So basically, like I mentioned, it is it is not a good practice to hard code it. So I will be passing it through the uh, variables. Uh, sorry, uh, the uh, in the command line while while running the project. So I've just configured here. So this this is all that is required to set up the authentication. Uh, in your MuleSoft application. So uh, I'll show more during the demo, but for now I'll complete all of the documentation that we have to go through. Next, uh, some someone asked about uh, like what is the pricing details, what is the information, how much does Stripe charge us? So all of these uh, details are present Okay, uh, so Rajiv, uh, the publishable key is basically used in the UI. Uh, so when uh, you customize your payment page, you will need this publishable key from the UI to make calls. So that is where the publishable key is used. Yeah, so this basically provides us details regarding what the pricing is. Uh, if you note here, there's no setup uh, fee, there's no monthly uh, fees or anything like that. All that is there is for every transaction, depending upon the type of transaction, they charge certain percentage. And that is how pricing works in Stripe. So you can go through this and uh, see what suits your needs. So we look to the uh, Stripe uh, documentation. Here we have the connector reference uh, that uh, it's a documentation basically MuleSoft that has provided. So here, let, let it load. So here, basically, you will have you will get to know all the uh, functionalities that Mule supports. So these are the connectors that Mule provides internally, basically uh, making calls to Stripe. But these are all uh, the features that you can use along with your Mule application. So if you see, there are a lot of features, uh, just like Stripe provides a lot of features, MuleSoft itself has uh, built like a wrapper around it and created a lot of connectors for us to use. So uh, integrating it in MuleSoft is not going to be very difficult because the options are so many. So this is regarding uh, the connectors. Now, if I, if I look at one of the connectors, So say create customer. Uh, one thing uh, that is a little bit uh, not so good about this documentation is uh, so say they uh, so this is the documentation for create customer. 
uh, they they give you information about what it does and they give you the endpoint that internally they are hitting but if you look at the parameters you will not get all the details that you need so this is when you will have to refer the stripe documentation that they have so the documentation will be available here And uh, Stripe has a very extensive documentation about each of the functionality that they offer. I'm selecting create customer. Maybe you have to go to Stripe API documentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I copied the wrong. OK, uh, just since I got you guys confused. So these are the two documentations that we have for Stripe. Uh, this documentation is basically the entire documentation that has all the options that Stripe has. <coughs> so it's not uh, just the API documentation. It gives details about what products are there. I, Mamta has already gone through this. And this is the API documentation that we have. So uh, if I check the customer. So uh, there are different endpoints, uh, like say uh, for, for customer, we have create customer, we have get customer. If I click on the individual links, I will get the curl request and I will get what all fields I can pass uh, so as to make the call. If you check in this connector configuration, they have just given create customer content. But what fields are there, all of that you will get to know using this documentation. So uh, it's very important that we go and see what is there in the Stripe documentation. So this is regarding the Stripe um, documentation that we have. So one good thing that Stripe offers is the Stripe CLI. That is very, uh, very handy when you are doing any kind of development. Uh, it is very easy to use. Yeah. So the installation steps are given here. Very simple, uh, very simple to use in that sense. So I've just downloaded the Stripe CLI for Windows. Um, So the first step that that it says, uh, so we can't make any calls until and unless we authenticate here as well. So first thing I have to do is I have to log in. So if you if you notice here when when you try to log in, uh, you basically get a link to authenticate. So I am just going to copy copy that. And open it in my browser. And I'll have to basically allow access, right? Uh, so my account is configured. And uh, you don't have to log in for the next 90 days. You will be using the same key. If you want to log out, uh, just the same uh, command, Stripe log out. So this will basically uh, remove all the credentials that you have. So uh, what we'll do is let's just create a product using the uh, Stripe CLI. OK, so I'm just going to copy this. Um, So this is what I was waiting for. Since I'm logged in uh, with my account, my uh, see, my test key automatically gets added here. So I don't have to basically go and copy the test key. Um, so 
this is how the call request looks like. So basically, I've tried to create a uh, the CLI as internally called the uh, like the call request has been hit and the product is created. So if I go to my dashboard and go into products, uh, I'll be able to see the recent product that I created. That is the gold special that I created. So this is how uh, Stripe uh, CLI works. Very handy and very useful. So this is something that you can look into. Okay, so we are done with all the documentations that we need to know before starting the demo. I have added uh, the links. Okay, so we can get uh, started with the demo. Okay. So the first thing uh, that we look into is the customer. Uh, so what are the operations that I can perform uh, with for the customers? I'll just rename this flow. Okay, so I'm going to add a basic listener. Okay, I draw added to sorry. Okay, so we already have the listener. Um, uh, so uh, before 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 uh, starting this, I will just show how create customer request should look like, so that we are clear on uh, we are clear on how we have to send our data. So if you have a look at uh, the curl request, we basically see that uh, the uh, this is how we we send the request. This is how uh, Stripe expects the request for create customer. So Stripe is basically uh, it revolves around the REST principles. It it follows the uh, basic methodologies and terminologies that REST has. Uh, while sending the request, we are supposed to send the request in URL encoded format. And while getting back the response, we can get it in the JSON format. So this is how the request is sent, and this is how the response. Um, so before calling the Stripe connector, we basically have to make sure that we are sending the request in the URL encoded format. So I'm just going to make the transformation here. If you notice, this is how uh, your request should look like. Uh, I'll just change uh, change this to post. And now to create a customer, I just have to add it here. Use the Stripe con uh, connector configuration that I have and the payload as it is in the format that I am sending. So this completes the create customer flow. So before running this, I will have to uh, basically send my 
secret key that I have uh, from my account. So I will just send it through the arguments. Uh, I have already configured it while I was testing. So I'm just going to copy the key from here and add it here. Okay, I think it's already added. So you just have. Uh, so while while I am sending, I'm just sending two fields. But if you actually want to create uh, customers, you can uh, basically send uh, many fields like address, description, email, whatever is required for your use case. One uh, one good thing about uh, these API calls is whenever you're making any call, uh, you you will not just require these data. You will also want to add additional data, probably some some information about the customer that you want to store. So that is when you can use a metadata. So Stripe provides this metadata wherein you can provide the key value pairs. Uh, I think around fifty key value pairs you can provide whatever you want. Uh, and there's a restriction on the length of the key and the uh, value. So key can be around 50 characters long and the value can be around 500 characters long. So uh, this is one, one good thing uh, to basically send your configurable information. So whenever, uh, so each of these functionality basically work in terms of object. If you're creating a customer, if you're creating an invoice, Stripe internally basically creates an object. So this is how the object looks like. Here you'll have all the data related to that particular customer. So similarly, if you send the metadata, that also will be visible here. So this is the metadata. Order ID is not something that Stripe expects, but this is something that your business wants. So you can configure it and send it back. So yeah, our, our application is deployed. And I'm just going to hit create customer. So the customer is created and this is the response uh, that we get. Now, if I go and look at the sta uh, Stripe dashboard, twelve fifty nine. this is the customer that I created. So it will have a uh, it will basically have the details of that customer present here. So this is a simple customer creation. Now, up, uh, other functions that uh, the in the customer field that we have is basically okay. Let me add the listener and show the CRUD operations that we have. So I'm just going to add. Uh, delete customer endpoint. So since uh, since this is delete customer, I will need to uh, specify what customer I want to delete. So I'm just going to pass a customer ID over here. then I just have to drag the delete customer and use the same uh, configuration and provide the customer ID here.
So this is all that is required for the delete customer endpoint. We'll just wait for it to be redeployed. So let me just pick the same customer ID that I created and pick my customer ID from here and pass it in the call. So the customer is deleted. Now if I go and refresh this page, there's no customer here for this particular ID. So this is basically a deletion of the customer. Uh, similarly, we can uh, have something to get all the customers uh, in the application. So that also is a simple, uh, simple process. So I'll just uh, show that quickly and then we can move forward. So this is the list all customers, which will basically uh, provide all the customers that you have created uh, for your account. So if you notice, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, keys that you can provide, the filter conditions that you can provide in terms of when it was created, the limit, and all of that. So this can be used in uh, with the filters. For now, I'm just, uh, just basically showing how we can uh, get all the customers and how the response looks like. So the response, uh, since there are multiple customer, we will we will be getting uh, the response in array format. So I'll just change this. Uh, we are expecting a JSON response. So I will be changing the data view here. And let's just wait for it to be redeployed. Okay. Uh, so I'm just hitting this endpoint and we will basically uh, get the list of all the customers that we have for our account. There are multiple customers currently, so we get uh, all of this data. So these are the operations that uh, some operations that I have shown that uh, we have in the uh, Stripe connector related to the customer, but there are many other operations. So all of this uh, you can refer to in the connector reference and also the Stripe documentation. So we have currently completed the customer. Uh, next, we'll move to products. So Stripe has this ability that we can create products. You can create it from the UI. But uh, since we, we use it in our application, we also have uh, connectors from uh, MuleSoft wherein we can uh, create the products. So this is what we'll be looking at now. I will just add a couple of listeners so that we can just finish this one. OK. 
change it to the post method. And again here, uh, whenever we are creating something, we always have to send it in the URL encoded format. So before sending out the request, I will have to prepare my uh, request body uh, in that format specifically, because that is what uh, Stripe expects. So here I have something already. So I have created uh, the payload already. Now, if I just go and look at the, uh, the condition that we have for creating a product, So if you look at uh, look at it, there are a lot of fields that you can pass. Uh, more specifically, suppose you want to uh, set this this particular field. It also has like uh, many other child parameters. So the way to pass it is uh, you basically have to uh, set it like this in in your request. So this is how you will be able to create uh, the child parameters as well. So this is something uh, that uh, to note about. Uh, they they don't write it in the documentation and all of that. So you might get stuck here a little bit. So now I'll just uh, call the create, use the create product connector. It's very similar to the customer uh, customer that we created, a similar step, uh, not much of a difference. So this is the create product that we have. Uh, let's just wait for it to be redeployed. And meanwhile, maybe you can answer some questions from yeah, the sure. chat. You can start from Prakash Arora. Go down. Yeah. Uh, okay. What is? Uh, um, so I think it, this one is answered by Amit. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, so basically, yeah, this is also answered. Yeah, this one. Uh, is it possible to try to check for duplicate customer creation? Is possible to also so uh, so when you're sending the post request, uh, you cannot actually uh, add any kind of validation in terms of the name or anything like that, uh, because all of like anyone can have multiple names. So if you're speaking about whether the uh, Stripe checks if the name is same or anything like that, that does not happen. Uh, But what we can do is like, no, no, I, I don't think there is any uh, check on duplicate customer creation. So customer that we can create. Uh, this I am not sure about. I will get back to you guys on this one. Suppose if we need mandatory fields that the customer in their system is the request uh, Yeah, you can create a RAML also, or you can use the mule soft validations that they have. Like uh, you can you can basically add validation in your endpoint. You do not have to uh, kind of rely on Stripe for that. So this this is something that um, is application dependent and something that we can do ourselves. Uh, nothing that Stripe. Uh, Stripe has to do with, uh, we can just add custom validations from our end in Mulesoft. Uh, okay, so I think uh, you are getting confused uh, here. Okay, the question is, will this product be created against any particular customer or the user you logged in? So the, the user that I logged in is, uh, consider it as I am an organization and this is uh, the main uh, main account that I have. So whenever a customer is created, you do not go and create an, another account or something like that. So customer is just like an entry in the database. So when you create a product, it is like a general product. If you want to link it to the customer, there are ways to do it. But in as such, product is an independent thing that does not get associated with the customer. So these are uh, two different things. 
okay so i think the create product is set up i'll just hit the endpoint So this is my my uh, configured. So here is what I am expecting in my Mule application. Suppose I want to make the description mandatory. That is a validation that I will add from uh, my end in the application. So okay. Maybe you can you can read in the application. Stop and read. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, what does it mean when you say product in Stripe? Uh, so, if you if you have a look at this, uh, these are the products that I have created uh, previously. So, suppose I want to charge my customer for this particular product. So, I can basically uh, when when creating an invoice, I can basically can use. You the... Sorry. Yeah, so I can basically use the product ID that is there. So every product that you create, you get a uh, you get a product ID. I can use this product ID, and when I'm sending an invoice to the customer, I don't have to specify like how much is the amount or how much like what are the details. I just have to send this product ID, and automatically Stripe helps us identify what is the cost that is. Uh, that is written here and, and what is the description so that is where uh, products are very useful in uh, in this in this scenario like you don't have to again and again specify and also once you create a product you can map it to multiple customers right so you just don't have to make the call again and again uh, just for that customer you just have to use this id so this is where it becomes easy for product creation yeah so, okay, so this is deployed. Okay, so my product is created. Uh, I have only given a description right now, but if you have a look at it, there are so many uh, fields that you can use. All of these details can be filled in one go and this can be reused again. So that is why uh, this, this becomes very uh, a very good feature in my opinion. So if I just go, go to products, so this is this is the product that I created. Uh, one thing you will notice here is I have pa uh, passed uh, twenty thousand, but if I look at here, uh, I see that the amount is two hundred dollars. That is because uh, Stripe has this minimum uh, minimum currency configuration uh, depending upon the currency. So I'm using USD uh, currently. So uh, in terms of USD, they they consider it as cents is the minimum uh, amount that that they accept. So uh, one cent is sorry one dollar is like 100 cents so basically they do the conversion intern internally so if you want more uh if you want to have two thousand so instead of twenty thousand you'll be sending two lakh as the value here so this is something that you might get confused when you're doing uh something to be noted that's all uh even Maybe, yeah we can skip the gate and delete and we can proceed with the payment part yeah sure uh so uh, so before proceeding uh, to the payment part, there is one particular use case that I told wherein uh, whenever a new event is created, your application is notified. So let's just see that before the payment. Uh, I'll just create a new configuration file and I'll just write it as invoice listener. Right. So here if I... If I search in the Stripe connectors, uh, there are multiple uh, listener that we have. So uh, for each of the event, like these are all events on new charge listener or on new coupon creation. So whenever a coupon creation uh, happens, so that is uh, that is something Stripe considers as an event. So we in our application can listen to it. So I will just try with uh, on invoice 
listener. So if you see that instead of HTTP listener here, uh, the source becomes the on-invoice listener. I have to give the connector configuration. And if you have a look at um, the values here, we can decide on what, what will be the frequency in terms of how, how long do we have to listen. So here it is set in milliseconds. So every one second, it will be listening to new events. So what I'll do is I'll just log one of these events. And I will go into the invoice part. Um, yeah, I'll just wait for it to be redeployed. Otherwise, uh, we might not be able to see. Okay, so here I'll just create a test invoice, uh, test invoice as in the test billing uh, thing that I have. So I have to um, give the customer details like what is a customer and what is the invoice created for? Say I'm creating it for sunglasses. What is the quantity uh, that I'm creating it for? So I'm, I'm just gonna keep it as one right now. And here uh, we have an option, whether we want to request payment from the customer or we want to auto charge the customer. Uh, and also, do you want to send the uh, invoice as an email to the customer or do you want it to just be print, printed as the PDF and not be sent to the customer? So these values help it uh, help in deciding that. Apart from that, you can decide on what you want in your invoice. Currently, this is how the invoice looks like. Uh, it, has, it has all the uh, details regarding the product. So this is how I'll just keep it. I'm just going to review it. And I don't want to add any CC. And I'm just going to send the invite. So if you notice here, I just created an invoice. That is a new event that happened. So uh, the listener that is there here, it basically listened to it and logged the whole event. So this is uh, one, one good thing. Like whenever some new uh, sale happens or whenever some new uh, payment goes through, you can just listen it or, and add it to your Excel sheet. So this is one of the use case that MuleSoft recommends. Okay, so I had given my email ID. So if you look at how the invoice happens, so this is how uh, the customer gets the invoice. And if I can actually make a payment by copying this link, uh, going over here. And basically making the payment. So uh, you, me as uh, um, me as someone who who is providing the services, I didn't have to do any setup in terms of the UI or anything like that. Everything is handled by Stripe. So this is where uh, they say low code. There's no code written as such. It's just a simple simple thing. So this is one one uh, one way uh, Stripe provides payment option. There are many other payment options out of which we'll we'll look into uh, the checkout. Uh, that's a checkout option that uh, Stripe provides. So I'll just. So Stripe Checkout is something that is known for a uh, low code uh, payment integration. Basically, you you can uh, create it is in just one day like it's that simple uh, you can you can just use the ui that stripe provides or you can also customize as to what your ui should look like so i'm just going to give a demo of that end to end flow where you create the ui and uh, where the uh, payment happens from the back end so i'll just create one new file So this is uh, this is the file that I've created, and I'll just add a HTTP listener, and I'll just write payment session. Again, I'll have to modify uh, my request. I'll have to prepare my uh, request in the required format. So I'm just going to copy it from here.
right? Uh, so just just ignore this for now. I'll you will get a clear understanding of what it is uh, when when I show the UI. So this is create a session wherein Stripe creates a session for payment. Uh, so this call. Uh, it's similar to one of the calls that we had. Uh, you can check the documentation here. So this is what is uh, what we have to use while creating a, the completing the payment basically. So this is this is the session. This is the session that we have, and for uh, every transaction, usually it is ex uh, expected that we have one session. So these are the details that are there, similar to the customer field or anything like that, the object that is there. So I have my request. What I'm going to do is I have created like a front end. It's available from the Stripe end. It, I got it from GitHub. So I'm just going to use that. Okay, so uh, if you have a look at this, this is uh, this is how my checkout page looks like. Uh, simple HTML code uh, that that I have like that I've got, and then I can configure two things: one, the success page. Once the payment is successful, where does it go to? Uh, so this is my success page, and one, the cancel page. Uh, basically, like if the user cancels the payment, uh, what page should it route to? So internally in the checkout page, what I'm doing is I'm basically hitting uh, the payment session endpoint that we have here, that we have created here. I'll just run it so that. So I'm basically hitting that endpoint. And when the request is successful, I'm basically routing to the uh, success URL that I have configured while, while creating the payment session. So if you have a look at this transform, uh, component while preparing the request. I'm giving the success URL. This is my success HTML. And I'm giving the cancel URL. This is my cancel HTML. So to run this, I'm I'm just kind of creating a server. Uh, So I'm using a Python to create the server. You can use Node also to just uh, create a server. Uh, here it is running on 8081. So right now, uh, you, you guys must have noticed that I've not created uh, uh, any course configuration or anything like that. My mule endpoint is at port 8080, and this is at 8081. So I'm just going to disable course and open Google Chrome till, till it loads. So this is a course disabled browser. Um, it does not validate all of that. OK, so my back end is running. My front end is up. So I'm just going to open my front end. So this is, this is the simple uh, checkout page that I have for one of the items. Uh, one more thing. If you notice here, uh, you you must notice that I have given a price. So uh, just like product, you can uh, create something called as a price object in, in Stripe. So price object will basically have all the details in terms of how much is the price, what is the currency, uh, which we'll be seeing right now. So when I'm pressing the checkout, payment session endpoint is hit. And since I have given this, a uh, price object over here and i have already configured that my price has to be $500 stripe itself is getting the details uh, from from what i have created and charging me $500 so me as a user i can go ahead and uh, given my card details Uh, 
so this is a test card. You will get a lot of test card options uh, if you Google. You can just uh, test it in for your testing. You can use this. So once my payment is con uh, uh, completed, I basically route to my success page, and this completes the whole payment journey. Uh, now, if I have a look at my dashboard. and uh, go and check my payment. This is the latest payment that I've had at 126. It basically contains the entire detail uh, regarding the card and all of the process that it went through. You can see the breakup over here. And it basically has all the details related to the bank and um, all of that. So this is how uh, detailed information Stripe provides. Uh, so, yeah, this is basically it. A uh, couple of things that will help you while you are developing. Uh, there might be cases when you basically uh, encounter errors and Stripe might not return uh, why that error is happening exactly. So for every transaction, they have logs over here. So this was my recent transaction that I had and that was successful. So basically all of the details related to that transaction will be present here. Now, suppose I look at say a failed transaction. So this, this was somewhere I got an error. I go and see what exactly and why exactly it is happening. So I try to make a uh, give an Indian address for a non uh, for a US payment. And that was the issue that happens. So this, uh, you know, uh, describe this error description will be pro provided here in a more elaborate fashion. So you can refer the logs for that. Yeah, so that is pretty much uh, what I wanted to cover. Uh, just just one quick overview regarding webhooks. So Stripe also provides this interesting uh, webhook integration where basically uh, you have uh, different events that you have and uh, you basically can configure your URL, uh, your, uh, your service URL. And whenever that particular event occurs, Stripe itself will basically hit your endpoint. And that is how you can uh, process, proceed with what you want to do after a particular events occur. Uh, so when I'm talking about events, you can see all the events that are happening in this, in this dashboard again. So look at how many events that, that have been created. Every payment, every... Um, order or every product that is created is considered as an event in Stripe. For each of these events, there'll be a separate ID and all of the details can be uh, seen here. So, so this is also one of a very good uh, elaborate feature that Stripe has. So yeah, that covers everything. And if you want to know internally how Stripe makes calls, you can just go here. Currently, this is not decompiled. I've just decompiled it and so for each of these actions, we have internally these Java files that are there. So if you just open one of these, let me open create customer. If you open one of these, you can see how MuleSoft basically does all the operation. It is basically uh, using this Stripe internal U uh, URL and hitting that endpoint and then basically giving you back the response. So that is how the connectors work internally. So you can just explore on this as well. That's That ends my uh, demo, if there are any questions. So uh, do you have any questions you can ping? in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask and thanks prakri for nice demo no problem thank you okay i think there is no questions you have explained very well maybe you can stop sharing your screen and i will take it over yeah thanks everyone Okay, I'm going to stop the recording as well. So we can discuss casual, like if any question or anything.